the uh, the good the good no father. It's a very confusing thing to report as a dollar. Yeah. Um, how did music cater to her masochism? I mean, uh, yeah. So, so, so that's that's a, I mean it's probably unfair for me to say masochism because like has anybody ever felt kind of mopey and like you put on sad songs and you know like like you know Taylor Swift and have a good <laughs> have a good cry feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean she's she, well, how how long how long I think this is a leading question. How long has she been waiting for uh, five, five years? Five years? Yeah, it's, uh, that goes beyond because it's supposed to be the duration of the relationship plus six months is the maximum amount of time that you're allowed to mourn. Hey, how well does the provost, a four two question to you, how well does the provost use the occupation? Anyone want to contribute? It seems like you thought it was just a step above being a bottom, just slightly better. Did you hear that? He said that uh, uh, he thought that it was that it was just a little bit better than being a bod, but not much. A what? A bod, a, which is a. Uh, anyone want to tell what a bod is? This is important. Somebody should know this. This is sort of key. Anyone? Bod. Pimp. Yeah. Pimp. No. no. What were Isabella's last words? This was supposed to take some work. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I just actually wrote down her last words. <laughs> no, that was that was that's, you had to go back though, right? Because she's 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 oddly quiet for uh, much of the much of the. the when last I saw thing. her last words, were were thoughts are no subjects, intense but really thoughts. Anyone get something um, different? You get something different? Yeah, I do. I don't know. Let's check it out. I'm trying to get out of the habit of giving giving uh, answers on these. All right. So she's not on the last page. Not on the second to the last page. Not on the third to the last page. Okay. So there's intense but merely thoughts. Okay, I think that's uh, I think that's what I got. I like it when it says unmuffles Claudio. <laughs> Sounds really perverse. Okay, so her her last her last act before she's silenced is uh, what did she do? What she what's she doing? So the last words are uh, in, in, intense or merely thoughts. So she's uh, arguing one specific side of the uh, the justice. Yeah. She's defending Angelo and saying um, he only thought that he could have sex with me, but he didn't. So he didn't commit the crime that you would be killing him for. Yeah. So her her last her last act is to defend Angelo, who we all adore. <laughs> yes. Sir. Why did Vincenzo humiliate Isabella? Yeah, so that's obviously, uh, that might be a, a, a larger exam question. won't be on the quiz, but anyone want to field it? What number is that? Number six. Um, so I'm five, six, six, one. So I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but I mean, he really kind of puts her through the paces, right? She's got to, she goes out and, um, and has to publicly declare herself not only a not virgin, but sort of a, but sort of a whore in front of everybody on parade, which is really sort of a, a thing for her, right? And then she has to, uh, anything else? And then she has to defend the guy that, that supposedly raped her, and just, uh, um, I mean, just total, you know, abject, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, high heel boot to the back of the neck abjection. Why? Isn't it kind of like the, uh, the double checking thing, making sure he's doing the right course instead of going through the paces? Seems like. Yeah. But I, I just, uh, I question the right thing part of it, right? Maybe, maybe just a, I don't know. 
It's, in, it's interpretive. Is that all? Yes, sir. Anyone? Yes. We have a yes. I thought not. We've got no's and yeses. Yeah, that would be a, uh, we'd have to kind of interrogate the text. It's not on the quiz. We can interrogate the text if you'd like. I think it's hard to tell. I think you can play it both ways. But I don't know. I mean, Aeschylus is sort of this, this perpetual kind of, and we'll talk about this today. I mean, does, does he get anything? I don't know. I suppose we'll see. He doesn't let on if he does. Yeah. I mean, that, that could be, he could be, he could be Kaiser Sosa in it, you know, and like really engineering everything, like really behind, behind the scenes, just acting stupid, but maybe he has, and you know what, I'm going to go with that. That's my new hypothesis. I think he does. I think he's just watching everybody just go and just, and they're all doing his bidding and they don't even know it. I don't, I don't have any evidence, but... <laughs> Okay, are we ready? All right. is a mystery and your horror sir being members of my occupation using painting to prove my occupation a mystery but what mystery should there be in hanging if I should be hanged I cannot imagine yeah I don't know if this character's name is Everson but isn't it the executioner uh, he's talking he's involved in it no yeah. no no but you get some it sounds like you get some uh, some plausibility points there so we have, uh, you said Pompey? Yeah, to uh, Abhorson. <laughs> it's funny because his name is Abhorson. Um, and it's when, uh, uh, well, I'll leave the significance to the end. Faith, my Lord, I spoke it, but according to the trick, if you will hang me for it, you may, but I had rather it would please you, I might be whipped. Situation? I partly think a due sincerity governed his deeds till he did look on me. His act did not overtake his bad intent and must be buried as an intent. Yeah, we should have got that. <laughs> Once discovered, what does Angelo beg that the Duke do with him? Yeah. Yeah, I got I get them confused too. Lodovico, Lucio. There's too many of those 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 uh, quasi Italian L names. I would be so offended if actually I wouldn't, but uh, if I had an Italian L name. Yeah, I feel like a Lorenzo. All right. So when we were uh, most rudely interrupted by the end of class, as we so often are. We were discussing the Vincentio problem, because we were discussing the different problems of the problem comedies. And, uh, and we were on, so we had, uh, uh, we looked at, let's, let's look back at our other ones. We were looking at, he might be fundamentally incompetent, the embodiment of Christian mercy or understanding, Machiavellian mastermind. And then, and then we were on, uh, is he a voyeuristic sadist? And uh, um, so, I mean, we were just looking at the end. And uh, um, so, uh, uh, you know, Angelo begs to be killed. Does, does he get killed? No. Uh, Lucio wants to be whipped and then, and then eventually hang, hanged or hung. Which would it be? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then does he get that? No. What does he have to do? Yeah, and what's Angelo's punishment? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and we know because we know our Shakespeare, <laughs> that uh, uh, marriage is a, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Just kidding, honey. Um, nobody knows the bubbles I've seen. 
And uh, and then and then Isabella, you know, uh, she's she's getting thrown into the. Uh, we we talked a little bit about that. Um, and then really drawing out the sentences, and, and, and really, I think, I mean, really torturing, you know, drawing out the torture of, of particularly Isabella, who thinks that her, her brother's dead and that it's her fault, and, that, you know, like, and just not relenting on that at all, you know. So, um, so you know, people have, people have thought that uh, he might be, a, uh, might be a, a sadist. And then, you know, I mean, even if Izzy, poor Izzy, if, even if she doesn't marry him, you know, she, they're not going to let her into the Order of St. Clair's after this public scandal, you know. So her career's over. She's just screwed. Doesn't she sort of prove, like, the end all be all moral authority? Maybe. Because it's her say that, that dictates the punishments, essentially. Maybe. I can see it. Uh, and then another way that he's, he's sometimes um, thought of as an uh, insecure exhibitionist. And uh, so uh, measure for measure, obviously, uh, primarily a reference to the passage in Matthew about judging not lest you be judged. And uh, this keeps coming up, and you know, it's just in, in, in folk forms from uh, Angelo Escadolis, Vincentio, and Isabella. Um, I don't know what semi-perversely means, but I imagine I knew what I was talking about when I wrote it. Um, the, uh, oh yeah, when he claims the law of mercy demands Angelo's death. So, it's, um, so I guess it's less perverse and more just kind of, uh, is that irony? I'm scared to even say irony now. I think it's ironic. I mean, basically irony is just a, a, a a, a, you know, a gap between expectation and outcome. So the law of mercy demanding Angelo's death. So there's a problem with it. Um, in his judgment of the judge, we also see it used as a meta-legal apparatus, much like what uh, the King James was doing when appearing incognito in the law courts in London. He also did this, um, a measure of, uh, of the measuring system, like a uh, um, measuring measure. Right, are you following that? Because the law is the measure, and it's like a so it's like a metal it's a metal law, so it's undercover boss. Except for, you know, he's in the court system, and James really did this. He went and made sure everything came out how he wanted to. Otherwise, you know. And then I also said that it's a um, we didn't read uh, all's well that ends well, but there's a great measuring swords thing in there. It's when um, you know the guys have to have to measure swords. Proverbially, I told you there were a lot of penis jokes in this. Um, so uh, it's just, it's just he's got to be the, uh, he's got to be the, the, uh, the alpha dog or whatever. Um, he stages the whole thing, and then, and then his sort of moment of triumph is when Angelo alludes to a mightier member that he assumes is controlling the actions of Izzy and Mariana. Um, there's this whole phallic economy in the play, um, but it's, but it's all about sexual abstinence, right? And then I uh, talk about I talked about the fear of lucidity from Freud's uh, the uh, uh, taboo of virginity about being upright and, and, and you know so for an upright for an upright guy to partake in in uh, uh, sexual indiscretions means that he would lose his uh, his manliness and not be able to uh, to uh, be really a man that wasn't a tautology in any way shape or form. Um, so, and, and I think that uh, um, Ms. Schneider uh, talked a lot about the dribbling dart of love and the, uh, his, the can't, and can't, com can't pierce his complete bosom because he's you know, intact and full. And, uh, uh, and then as, as, as Berger, Berger's article that we're not reading is all about, that, uh, um, that he's sort of uh, uh, in a contest for Vienna's most complete bosom and his, his, uh, his major his major uh, competition, his major competition is, you know, Angelo the angel and, and, and Isabella the uh, um, super hot celibate. So he's got to prove that he's, uh, that he's more, more or less, you know, uh, um, apt to fall than they are. All right, act one, scene one. This is just sheer sheer making a PowerPoint momentum why this is on the PowerPoint. 
So I have a uh, page three. All right, I'll I'll read uh, I'll read these these uh, five words. Aeschylus, my lord, of government, my want, 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 want. So, um, why is Aeschylus the first word of the play? Yeah, yeah. So is the play about Aeschylus? What would be different if we just started with of government? We've seen this sort of thing before, you know, that the Henry comes in making some blabber blasted you know, uh, proclamation about something with his convoluted syntax and doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, Theseus, you know, pedantically rambling on about the, the nature of being. And uh, what do we get by adding this Aeschylus and my lord? Doesn't it make the, the duke's position sort of dependent on somebody else? Hmm. He's less venerable and, you know, less than Theseus was, than Henry might have been. Maybe. I mean, he is just a duke, right? There's that. You know. Maybe. You got something? Okay, yeah, I like that too. I think it's actually establishing his dominance over him because especially telling from the second line, you see Aeschylus and then you see my lord and he has a title where Aeschylus does not. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was just going to say that um, Aeschylus is the consistent portion of the play. He's, he's in it throughout as himself, and the Duke is going to sort of abandon everything and, and play this whole charade out. So, to me, it, it point, pinpoints him as a central figure. I actually agree with everybody. I don't think that they're contradictory. Let's see, what did I put? All right, we talked about that. Uh, another thing, the sort of uh, allegorical thing, uh, Aeschylus scales as in scales of justice, as in measure for measure. So he's just, uh, there's that. And then as, as you guys were, uh, we've already addressed this question because you guys are, are uh, you know, the, the students are, uh, are lapping the teacher at this point in the class, which is good for you and bad for me, but we already talked about this. Who is subservient to whom? Compelling, compelling ideas on both sides. Uh, but either way, it's a problem, right? So if we, uh, um, if 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 the, uh, if it's really about Aeschylus, and Aeschylus is the scales of justice, and he's the consistent thing, he's like the, uh, he's just sort of the law, right? Like, um, no, we didn't get we didn't get Lord Chief Justice because we we didn't do that Henry play, but he's just the figure of the law. You know, just the uh, um, the workings, the sort of blind workings of the law, just as the law. And then if, uh, but if, 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 so if he's in charge and the Duke has to work under that, I mean, that's kind of, we're in this post-Magna Carta world, we like that, right? We like the idea that, our, uh, that Obama can't just go do whatever he wants, right? That would be bad, right? You can be president of the United States, but you still can't, you know, receive oral favors from your intern in the Oval Office, right? And um, so the law should be bigger than the, the, the you know the executive officer, but if if the law is serving the duke, and the duke we know is kind of a, a whimsical fellow, maybe that's not such a good thing. Maybe it is. I don't know. Okay, so uh, let me get a duke to read up to here. Go ahead. Of government, the property is unfold, would seem in me to affect speech and discourse, since I am put to know that your own science exceeds the event, be less of all advice my strength can give you. Yeah, that's you good. Thanks. Okay, so we've got this, uh, this first sentence. Remember how I was complaining about how the, uh, the, last, the last opening was too easy to Othello? 
Is this the, we have the same problem here? <laughs> I mean, anybody? Government, the properties to unfold. Okay, uh, let's see what let's see what I what I put. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. All right, what tone would we describe this as having? And I have some ideas. Anybody want to vote for clear? All right, one. Anyone want to vote for convoluted? We have a few convoluted, confused, a la Duncan, a la. All right, we have a few confused. Insecure, interesting. Pompous, can be pompous and insecure. Often pompous people are insecure. I'm going with pompous. Sincere, okay. Something else? Spooky, <clears throat> enthralling, arousing. <laughs> oh, there were some good facial expressions. All right, let's see what I have next. Okay, this is always a good thing when you're trying to figure out what a sentence means. What's the subject? <laughs> of government. So of government. So if it's of government, we would put a whom after of, right? So that means that that means it's. Does that mean it's a subject? Is whom a subject? No. So it's not of government. Of government, the, the properties to unfold. That would be a, a, that would be a, it's a, it's a noun phrase, but it's not a, uh, it's not the subject, it's the object. So, um, I don't know, anyone want to, want to guess what the subject of the sentence is? Yeah, yeah, it would have to be, right? Because he's the one doing the, or, or the actor, if we're going to use sort of a, a descriptive linguistics. So the actor of the sentence would be the duke, but he's, he's sort of, he's not mentioned until the, until the second clause, right? So um, kind of hidden already. He's, he's, hidden in this, he's hidden in this sort of a, a deceptive discourse. All right, slightly different question. What is the first sentence about? And let's just say the uh, let's just say the first the first two lines of it. Law. Okay, good. Let's uh, if we were to use the uh, if we were to use the language of the sentence, what would we say? I'll give you my vote. <laughs> it's uh, of government, the properties. So the uh, what does that mean? Properties of the. Yeah. So of, of government, right? So the, sort of the way the government works, right? Anyone want to disagree with that? You can, but you'll be in, it's not going to go very far. What does to unfold mean? To discover. All right, good. To, to discover, literally to release sheep from the fold, to release or, to release or exhibit them, but to, to disclose or reveal by statement or exposition. Those are from the... Uh, OED, which I encourage you all, again, to go play with because it's a lot of fun. And when you get out of college, you can't do it anymore. It's really sad. That's why I came back. <laughs> <All right. coughs> Whoa. So, uh, would seem in me to affect speech and discourse. What the, the hell does that mean? He likes to talk about it. All right, he likes to talk about it. So we got something about speech and, speech and discourse. Um, Yeah. Proud of who he is as a dude, he's not like commanding or All right. sure of his decisions. Cool, that's nice. I like that. Let's see what I thought. All right, what does what does affect mean here? <coughs> what does affect mean? Okay, to be let's let's I think I've got a list of definitions here. So to to aspire to, to try to obtain like he he uh, this is sort of obsolete. Um, he's affecting to be the uh, president of U-A-S-U-M or whatever it's called. <laughs> so to try to obtain, uh, to show a preference for, you know, to like affection, uh, to counterfeit, to put on a false pretense. Oh, that's a symptomatic question mark there again. 
I really like the question mark in that font. Uh, to display for a particular effect. <coughs> and now they're all question marks. Wow. I need an editor. You better give me a TA next year. I need someone to abuse. So I'm voting for to, uh, this primarily of what to effect means in this, in this, uh, in this speech. Because I mean it. All right, so let's see. Would seeming me to aspire to speech and discourse? That kind of works. But I think it kind of works in the sense of this. To show a preference for it, to like. Would seeming me to prefer speech and discourse? To want to hug speech and discourse? I don't see it. You could, you could, you could say it. And I think that uh, uh, it means to, um, to put on. So really the last two. So what might to affect speech and discourse mean? Yeah. Just do this oratory. Just, just like the like the actual talking, like he's talking without really saying anything. Yeah. So so kind of a, a um, like pedantic oratory, just like. Just like speech, but uh, kind of being above the sound of his own voice. Right. Good. 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 So uh, as once again, I'm getting lapped here. So uh, I'm I'm saying to pompously pretend pretend to teach. Or like you said, to you know, just kind of give empty, empty oratory. That's my translation of it. So I've got something like, whoa, nice, nice tab there. <laughs> I would look like a pompous ass if I tried to explain to you how to govern. We all think maybe something like this. All right. So it'd be like, of government, the property is to unfold. So for me to unfold, unfold to you the properties of government would. You know, I, I would be, I would have to, would, would, it would look like I was, I was, you know, affecting speech and discourse, giving pompous oratory, you know, like, so, so, uh, you know, pompous ass. Anyone want to argue with me? The next sentence locks that in. I think so. Let's see what I... All right, since I am put to know that your own science exceeds in that the list of all advice my strength can give you. We can figure that one out, right? See what I put. That makes sense? Since I know that you already know more than I could teach you. So that gives us, since you already know everything about government, I would look like an ass if I tried to explain to you how to govern. Right? All of a sudden, it's not really all that unclear. Yeah, it took me an hour and a half to figure that out. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Is Vincentio being sincere? We had some sincere voters. Are you still on the sincere bandwagon? For the actions of Donald Trump, seems to this. Um, with Shakespeare characters, isn't it like a defining characteristic that unless they say that they're about to lie, they're generally just telling the truth? And I mean, even when they say they're about to lie, they usually can't manage to anyway, right? I mean, unless you're Othello or Desdemona. I mean, maybe. I don't know if I could, I don't know if we could extend that to a lot, but it's, it's, a, it's a hypothesis. Because almost every character, um, they never really lie, um, except for when they convince themselves of something. Right. They really know it's not true. Yeah, we saw, this, we saw this big time in Iago, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the closest that you tend to get in line with any Shakespeare character if you look at it. Okay. So let's look at the, so let's think of the Duke. Do you think the Duke really thinks that he's got nothing to teach Aeschylus about government? Let's see what I put. So uh, I think that these three, or these rather five words, put the sincerity hypothesis into question. So um, seem makes the phrase something like, I would appear to be a pompous ass, right? This will come together, I think. Put to turns, turns since I know to since I supposedly know. And in that limits, because there's definitely a, an emphasized you know, a, um, a parenthetical phrase in that. It's parentheses in the, uh, in the folio edition, by the way. The list of all advice my strength can give you so now we have something like, it would appear 
that I would be a pompous ass if I were to try to explain government to you since you supposedly know more about government and only government, mind you, than I do. We along for the ride? All right. Okay, now we got some more. Uh, a duke for me, please. <clears throat> Go ahead. Then no more remains but that to your sufficiency as your worth is able to let them work. The nature of our people, our seized institutions, and the terms for common justice, ye are as pregnant as our practice hath enriched any that we remember. Thank you. So, uh, so referring back to the end, that to the scope of what is what is uh, I think he sort of points out the the, the exact what that uh, that Aeschylus supposedly knows about. So, what would that be? Okay, so we have uh, a vote for the nature of our people, our city's institution, and the terms for common justice. So um, if he's not being sincere, the implied question is, what does Aeschylus not know? Hmm. I think we should all start saying if somebody knows something that they're pregnant with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're pregnant with knowledge of the Kardashian family. I know. I can tell. Okay, so uh, breaking it down a little bit more. The no, no more remains but that to your sufficiency. By the way, go ahead and put a uh, comma after sufficiency. That's uh, another signet editor being amazing with the punctuation again. <coughs> so this is after the uh, I've got nothing to teach you, right? Let's see what I say. Yeah, so it's right after the teaching. So there's, there's nothing else to do but, uh, but just kind of let what? Just let them work. Let, the, let Aeschylus' knowledge of government work. Does this make sense? Okay. And then, and then the, uh, the other question is, if Aeschylus is so smart about everything, why doesn't the Duke put him in charge? And it seems like he's about to, right? Hmm? Maybe uh, the Duke is about to put Aeschylus' alleged pregnancy to the test. Maybe because the Duke's objective isn't to put the best person for a job in charge. Maybe he's looking to go around and see what happens and just try to learn a bit about his, um, his territory. Yeah. It seems like Aeschylus is pretty valuable to him in, in administrating his government. So if he wanted to get set up a fall guy to take the blame for all this harsh justice, Mm. Want his main guy to go down for it. Okay. All right. So just just uh, protecting the old guy. The the uh, we're, we're told he's an ancient lord. I don't know where they got that. I haven't. Um, I looked a little bit, but I didn't. I didn't dig far enough because they don't have in the in the folio. They don't have the uh, the the list. But um. I mean, what if he was? If he's an old guy, that kind of changes it. If he's a young guy. It, it kind of makes more sense that he would be just sort of testing him and putting him through the paces. But if he's an old guy, I don't know. I don't know, it's weird. This scene kind of reminds me of, uh, um, you guys familiar with uh, Job from the, uh, from the Bible? Can anyone, can anyone tell me a little bit about Job? Isn't that like the, the test was if he killed his son, he'd be virtuous to God? Is that, that was Abe. That was Abe. Yeah. So uh, with, with Job, this is one of my favorite Old Testament stories. Because it's it's awesome. So um, so so God and the devil are uh, in a bar having some beer. Well, they're they're somewhere, and they're uh, they're looking at this guy this guy Job who is you know like a really pious dude, right? And um and uh, uh Satan's like yeah you know you know faith whatever you know like we can shake his faith you know he you know he's prosperous he's you know he's got he's got good family he's got you know like strong sons. You know, of course he's going to be faithful and, you know, like pious and stuff to you. You know, throw him, throw him a little adversity, you know, he'll, he'll fall away. And God's like, all right, man, you want to you know, put a little something on that? And then, uh, so they, they just, 
they kind of have this bet, and then uh, um, and then they just they just pile it on Job. They give him plagues, kill his family, take away uh, his money, everything. Just you know, leave, kick him, kick him while he's down. He's just abject, ostracized from the community, covered with lesions, and uh, um, and then but he's still still holding the uh, still holding the, the God's number one banner. So God wins the bet, and uh, um, I think it's an interesting interesting. Uh, uh, not, not, not a story that's used a lot by, uh, um, by uh, the evangelical crowd to recruit more, more people. But uh, <laughs> I really like the idea of God and the devil in a bar wagering about that. It's, uh, it's, it's a very compelling image to me. But then sure enough, in comes Angelo. All right, uh, someone want to read? I say, bid come before us, Angelo. What figure of us think you he will bear? For you must know we have the special soul elected him our absence to supply, lent him our terror, dressed him with our love, and given his deputation all the organs of our own power. What think you of it? Good. So, uh, so what's the point of this part of the speech? I don't know. Let's see if I have to say anything about it. Okay. What figure of us think you he will bear? So us, so what does he mean by us? Remember the royal we? That I encourage you all to use in your papers. <laughs> what we think is, right, never mind. That's, it's only a joke if you've graded a lot of papers, apparently. He means himself <laughs> and his office. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, and what you think of it. So, uh. So Vincentio has abandoned his lecture and begun to interrogate Escalus's pregnant knowledge. And then so he's asking these questions. So the, the, the sort of uh, the flavor or tone of these questions, you think that he's like really sincerely wanting to know, you know, like, Escalus, you're an old wise guy. I mean, wise man. You know, uh, isn't that weird how wise guy and wise man mean opposite things? But, um, you know, I really want your, I really want your input on this. Or is this like God up there just like, what do you think he'll do? And, you know, it's, it's totally unfair because God's omnipotent, right? God knows what's going to happen. Omniscient, rather, I guess, is the omni that's more apt, but it's all one, as they say. So anyone want to vote for, he's really asking for Aeschylus' advice? More of an exam? Are you voting for that? Yeah, that's what I picked up on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to go on a limb, but this guy, as close as like an older gentleman, right? And yeah. the Duke's feeling sort of impotent of late. So maybe this is his way of reasserting sort of his, his masculinity. Yeah. Sort of making him be like, what do you think? But he's not really asking. Sort of, I've decided this, so what yeah, do like, you do about it? Like when I ask you guys, you know, what does this mean? <laughs> 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 or uh, another thing, you know, like, like maybe a setup. Allah, Allah, God, and Job. And then so he says, uh, for you must know we have with special soul elected him our options to supply. So what do you think that means? And this time I really am asking. So I looked it up. I couldn't, really, I couldn't really get anything. I think that your sort of guess is as good as mine. Special purpose. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. I'm going with, with Blake unless anyone wants to, uh, wants to go a different route. Okay. Did you say special purpose? Yeah. So he's like, I've got something in mind. <laughs> what do you think of it? Hmm. So, uh, um, elected him our absence to supply, lent him our terror, dressed him with our love, and given him his deputation, all the organs of our own power. Snicker, snicker. So supply means to provide with, with, with uh, uh, something empty with contents. OED11C. So uh, it's, I guess that just makes sense. Uh, terror, love, and organs. What's missing? It'd be funnier if the organs were missing. I don't know. But um, but we know that that we um, remember from the, the counterfeit talk from uh, Henry the Fourth and with Macbeth that we know that being lent and dressed and deputized 
or uh, it, it minimizes it, right? So um, if if the duke were, say, a, a divine right of kings kind of guy, so uh, um, if the divine right of kings is right, you know, is terror, love, and organs enough to be a good to be a good ruler? Yeah, is that, an, is that enough? If the divine right of kings idea is right. Remember the divine right of kings thing from great chain of being? Okay, we've got God, angels, and then a bunch of different levels of angels because uh, medieval theologians had a lot of time on their hands. And then, then the king, then the, then the prince, then the duke, then the, and then at the bottom, of course, is... Uh, what, just above animals, what's the absolute worst thing you can be? Woman. Clear on the, clear on the bottom. Charming, charming. Uh, well, it's because there was no, there was no, uh, there were no, there were no women in the uh, monasteries where they're writing these things. So you know, like, uh, um, I don't know. Anywho, so um, so what what the what the duke. Has to do if, if 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 Angelo does a good job, then that means the divine right of kings is wrong, and the duke loses his magical essence of of of, of dukiness. So how does uh, how does Vincentio think Angelo will do at this point? How does Aeschylus think he'll do? As Aeschylus says, what does Aeschylus say? If any in Vienna be of worth to undergo such ample grace and honor, it is Lord Angelo. So Aeschylus is, is wonderfully ambivalent, right? <laughs> hey, if anybody can, it's Lord Angelo, but he's not saying that he can, right? And then the Duke. All right, well, I guess I should read my notes before I start blabbing. This is why the, the PowerPoints suck for this sort of thing. See, I'm learning. We all learn stuff. Um, yeah, so it, it, maybe Aeschylus is being passive aggressive here. You know, if any in Vienna be of worth, and this is just after he supposedly is, is, is told that he's of worth, I don't know, would he be pissed? Yeah. Would Macbeth be pissed? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting twist on the story of the old geezer. That'd be a good old comedy Aristophanes plot. Aeschylus goes, kills everybody, and, and, and then marries Isabella and Mariana. <laughs> and makes Angelo give him a back rub. <laughs> Does he get what's going on? You know, that's a big question. We're talking of Aeschylus here. Um, Angelo's interests, I come to know your pleasure. Always obedient. Is he always obedient? Yeah, so like Desdemona, he's very obedient. <laughs> Remember Desdemona when she was, uh, when she was, when she was uh, manipulating Othello? And then she kept crossing the line, crossing the line, and then she's like, oh, look, I'm obedient. But she really wasn't being obedient. He wants to know Vincentio's pleasure, two senses of it, hand one. Uh, you know, wants to know what uh, Vincentio would like him to do. Wants to know, in the biblical sense, his pleasure. You know, like, what's it like? What's it like being omnipotent, man? This is before they had uh, commissions. So from, from his later actions, what, what can we infer about what kind of Duke Angelo thinks Vincentio is? Anyone getting, getting some of this? Is that just confirmation bias? What do you think? All right. Does he simply continue Vincentio's policies? So if I, um, if, if I decide to put if I decide to put Rachel M in charge, and she comes up here and she runs the class completely differently than me, and we're all in groups and, and working together and acting out scenes and doing a lot of fun stuff with cupcakes and stuff, what is <laughs> what is that? Then I know what 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 uh, what Rachel M thinks about my teaching style, right? But she just does nothing that I did, right? Cupcakes. That's, that's low. That. That's low, man. <laughs> so uh, does one radically reform a program that one has respect for? Does Vincentio anticipate this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
All right, end of slideshow. Thank God. Hmm? Yeah, well, let's look. Let's look. We're not done. Because the end of the slideshow just means that I was sick of typing on PowerPoint. <laughs> it's not a yet. Yeah. All right. Now we get to my, my more familiar note cards. I love my note cards. I tried to do this on the, on, on the iPad. I went and broke down and got an iPad. It's too hard to... It's like... <laughs> I get the split screen. With the, I don't know. I'm a long ways away. So um, let's read the first sentence of the Duke. Duke's reply to Angelo. Can I get a Duke? Yes, sir. Uh, look where he comes. Is that what we'll start? All right, that, that works. And then I'll be Angelo. Always obedient to your grace as well. I come to know your pleasure. Now continue. Angelo, there's a kind of character. Thank you. That's good. So, uh, so we have the first sentence. So there's a kind of character in thy life. What does that mean? Hmm? Or, uh, um, well, character is like a characteristic, right? So there's a, uh, Angela, there is a kind of character in thy life that the observer doth thy history fully unfold. So what, what do we, so we know that he doesn't specify it, though. Does he say, Angelo, you are a great man? Does he say, Angelo, there's something about you <laughs> that, that someone, that, that the observer that knows your history fully knows. Doesn't, speci doesn't specify it, but we can hypothesize. What does, what does it turn out that he knows about Angelo's past? Hmm? He Mariana. Yeah, the Mariana saga, right? So, um, hmm, it's starting to kind of look like a setup. Thyself and thy belongings are not thy own, so proper as to waste thyself upon thy virtues, they on thee. All right, so whatever it is, uh, Vincentio makes it clear that he demands that it be put to public use. So, uh, so he's going to make an example out of him, right? Now, we, we, would, we would infer because he's putting him in charge and we, we don't know the, the depths of the diabolical duke just yet, that uh, it would be a positive example. But is there anything in the language that, that, that would suggest that the duke thinks that? Thy self and thy belongings. I wish we could talk like that. But of course, yeah, I mean, you guys do know that people didn't go around talking like this in Shakespeare's time, right? Okay. Although there probably was, I mean, it'd be a great skill to have in court is to be able to just uh, ramble off speeches in iambic pentameter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I think I suggested this in the reading questions. We really kind of, we really have a version of the Lord of Misrule ceremony that we're so familiar with. I don't remember what the, 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 uh, um, the uh, um, apocryphal origins from, uh, um, from uh, uh, Fraser's Golden, Golden Bow. A marvelous book, as I always say, completely, you know, very, very little, and it's accurate. But um, so the idea was, we remember that, in, in the, the Roman soldiers would elect a lord of misrule, and the idea you got to rule for thirty days and, and really do whatever you want, like really do whatever you want, like really. And then what happens? Yeah, chop. All right. Does that happened every time, even if they were like not wicked. I, I think it, I think it was just the deal. It was like you get to you get days. yeah. See, I mean, and just and it makes so much poetic sense that it couldn't possibly have happened. You know, I mean, this is the problem with Fraser. I mean, it'd be would you take it? You would, you wouldn't. Interesting. <laughs> Who would take it? I would. Because here's my caveat: when I'm in charge of everything, I kill everyone. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! And I think somebody else would have thought of that, which is another reason I don't think that it ever really happened. Did you just change the contract to be like, no, no, it's not 30 days, it's 30 years. Yeah. Well, no, I just, you know, I just, I, I, yeah, I can, I can rummage up supporters. The rules. Yeah, I mean, and I can rummage up, I can raise an army that's not going to follow their stupid rules. You know, like, I can, I can handle this. I mean, give me 30 days. Give me, give me an hour. <laughs> 
Sorry, this is a, it's a personal thing with me. <laughs> it's my, my inner Richard. All right. Um, so, but there's, there's, so there's differences, right? Um, so, so instead of, in, in, in measure for measure, we sort of have a misrule, right? Everybody's, everybody's fornicating and lecturing all over the place. What is to le lecture? Lecturize? <laughs> to leech? <laughs> so, um, so it's kind of inverted, and Angelo's supposed to be putting the, you know, he's supposed to be sort of ending the misrule, right? So it's a, it's a backwards, and, you know, typ typ I mean, it, it's as if Shakespeare knew the conventions, and, you know, like, like, like I said, he'd, he'd read all the stuff from, from uh, 20th century criticism, he knew about all this, and this is he's like, oh yeah, you think, you think that's how it works? Well, what if I make a comedy that's completely the opposite? But it's still, the effect's still just misrule, right? Because everything goes to putt either way, right? I mean, is it a well-governed state when, in, the, in the Duke's absence? I mean, maybe. I don't know. Only one guy gets sentenced to jail. Yeah. He doesn't do anything else. Yeah. He, he stomps around and, well, he was gonna, he was gonna pull the, the, uh, the whorehouses down in the suburbs. Yeah, so, hey, you know, one step at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to. I mean, if there's no car to run, it's totally fine. But still, there's some police officers who I've actually seen them hide behind bushes waiting for people to jaywalk. And then I've seen them give tickets to tourists on vacation. Yeah. And so, like, that's kind of dicks. And that's not good use of your time or your effort or your money. Yeah, well, they did that at a, at a playoff game. Oh, like, uh, I think it was like five years ago, and it was just everybody was coming out of the stadium, and it was just, you know, like the force of human stupidity just had everybody going across the road. And, you know, like, we've all been on both sides of that situation, but um, they just they gave everybody jaywalking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> or like they do that with the bike lights. <clears throat> Have you guys been caught by the, by the bike oh, lights? Yeah. Oh, I am just, I, I, I'm sorry for anyone who got caught, but I just... I, I, I ride the bike, and, and, and I'm a Nazi about, I mean, I'm sure this is a complete shock to you. I'm a Nazi about following bike laws. <laughs> like, stop at the sign. You don't get to go worrying about, I, I always get in fights on the bike. But anyway, I was just cheering because I have, like, my 12 bike lights, <laughs> you know, signaling properly and everything. And then there's just everybody piled up there, and I'm just like, finally. Um, sorry. Was that a digression? I believe it was. Okay, uh, what specific instructions? does uh, Vincentio give Angelo? So let's go to the bottom of page five. Um, so line 62 through, we'll say, until I tell you to stop, give me a duke. Yes, sir. My haste may not admit it, nor need you on mine honor, have to do with any scruple. Your scope is as mine own. So to enforce or qualify the laws as to your soul seem good. Give me your hand, I'll privily away. I okay, that's you. good. That's good. Thank you. So, um, so there we go. So, what specific instructions does Vincentio give Angelo? Go ahead. Yeah, do whatever you want. Hmm. Enjoy the obscene injunction. It's the. Uh, Supposed to be a feature of, of, of the uh, postmodern age that uh, um, instead of the superego telling you no, the superego tells you you're not enjoying enough and that's what you feel guilty for. So you're at home at Friday night studying and you feel guilty because you're not having enough fun. <laughs> and then, like, because all society tells you is you're really supposed to be really enjoying yourself and you're always kind of wondering, I'm having a pretty good time. Am I really enjoying myself? Where is this other party where the real, the real stuff's happening? You know, like, you know what I mean. It's another digression. <laughs> All right, let's go, uh, let's continue. You want, you want to continue? Sure. All right. I'll prettily away. I love the people, but do not like to stage me to their eyes. Though it do well, I do not relish well. Their loud applauses and aves vehement. 
Nor do I think the man of safe discretion that does affect it. Once more, if you will. Thank you. So uh, why add this? Explains why he just leaves without yeah. informing anyone. Well, I, uh, so I love the people, but, but do not like to stage me to their eyes, which is, of course, crap, right? I mean, that's a lie. He really might, he very much likes to stage himself to his people, as we learn later. Um, I think it just means, you know, do what you want, even if it makes you unpopular, right? So he says that uh, um, there are loud applause and Ave's vehement. You know, nor do I think a man of safe discretion. So, like, if you, if you worry about what the people think about your rule, you know, don't. It's, uh, um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to be popular, you're a lousy ruler. So, uh, um, so really just, like, not only do whatever you want, but here's a license to tyranny, you know, like, here's the keys. Have fun. So, um, what are the Duke's possible motivations? And remember, uh, conscious and unconscious motivations no longer mean anything to us. Well, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the old, uh, this one. <laughs> Three points. Yep, that'll never happen again. <laughs> if anyone's willing to, uh, Get an affidavit and swear by it that you'll name your firstborn son Vincentio. I'll give you an A in the class. <laughs> Does Vincent count? Hmm? If you already have a kid, you can change his name. <laughs> All right. Well, and, and and then the other thing is the other thing is. Uh, all right. So let's go. What 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 uh. What what does the duke want? Watch the world burn. Right. All right. Say so watch the world burn. Like he wants to reinstall the faith in, in him and his office. Um, come back in as the last of the two rules. So, uh, make himself look good. Anything else? I'm gonna I'm gonna add a couple. I'm gonna put uh, make himself look smarter than Aeschylus. himself to the state. So, um, remember I was talking about uh, uh, hysterics with Desdemona? And then, um, so do you remember the, the two interesting things about hysterics that I wanted us to remember from the, the classical psychoanalytical subject of interrogation? So one was, one was, uh, uh, that they, they, they're, uh, um, No one remembers. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, we'll do the hysteric. We'll do the mimetic triangle from the hysterics perspective, right? So we've got object, y, x. 
So um, do we remember what the, the, the sort of the, the paradox and the hysterics desire was? All right, so there's, there's two ways of, there's two ways of, of ensuring that, that your desire won't die from Midsummer Night's Dream, right? What were the two? Keep changing your desire. Keep changing your desire. Keep changing the Theseus method of, of uh, uh, notch on the bed post Theseus method, method and creating obstacles. And creating obstacles. And so which, 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 uh, which paradigm did the, uh, does the hysteric fall into? Mimetic. Hmm? Mimetic. Yeah, but which, with the Theseus model or the, or the Helena model? Helena. No. The Theseus model. But the difference was the reason that they're just not they're just not uh, um, bedpost notchers is that what they don't know what their they have no idea what their object is right because what they want because they over identify with the desire of the father or the, the person they have. so what they want is the most interesting man in the world right and then when when they find out that the most interesting man in the world if there's someone more interesting or that they got a math problem wrong in the fourth grade once and their, their fantasy of the perfect man comes collapsing down, they need to, they need to replace that, right? So, but, but ultimately, the thing that motivates them is they want somebody to show them what to want reliably. So, uh, if, if, if uh, uh, Vincenzo is trying to cut hold himself to the state, maybe uh, he's just... You know, this is just a hypothesis that somebody threw out me. <clears throat> I don't know if I believe it still, by the way. Well, I'll know by the end of this, uh, by the end of we're teaching measure for measure. But um, that, uh, he, needs to, he needs to plug Angelo in to find out what it is that he wants. Maybe. Let's look at uh, page 13. It says... On here, okay, yeah. So we talked about this dribbling dart of love thing. That's his excuse. We've already we've already done enough of that. So um, yeah. So he needs to uh, he needs to kind of create, you know, like uh, in, in in the in the Oedipal thing. You know, he's just not happy being on top. He needs to have to take somebody down in order to orient himself and enjoy himself and, and, and have a good time. And uh, um, we'll call it there so I can give you your quizzes back and we're at a good break because we're going to start with Angelo on next Monday. The, uh, the, good, the good no father. It's a very confusing thing for poor Isabella. Yeah. Um, how did music cater to her masochism? And... <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's, that's a, I mean, it's probably unfair for me to say masochism because, like, has anybody ever felt kind of mopey and, like, you put on sad songs and, you know, like, like you know, Taylor Swift and have a good, <laughs> have a good cry, feel better? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, she's, she, well, how, how long, how long, I think this is a leading question, how long has she been waiting for uh, five, five years? Five years? Yeah, it's, uh, that goes beyond because it's supposed to be the duration of the relationship plus six months is the maximum amount of time that you're allowed to mourn. Hey, how well does the provost, a uh, four two question two, how well does the provost occupation? Anyone want to, anyone want to contribute? Seems like you thought it was just a step above being a bond, just slightly better. Did you hear that? He said that uh, uh, he thought that it was that it was just a little bit better than being a bod, but not much. A what? A bod, a, which is a. Uh, anyone want to tell what a bod is? This is important. Somebody should know this. This is sort of key. Anyone? Bod. Pimp. Yeah. Pimp. No. <laughs> What were Isabella's last words? This was supposed to take some work. Yeah. Oh, and never mind. I just actually wrote down her last word. <laughs> no, that was that was that's, you had to go back though, right? Because she's 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 oddly quiet. 
for uh, much of the much of the, the last saw her last words were in front of everybody on parade, which is really sort of a a thing for her, right? And then she has to uh, anything else. And then she has to defend the guy that that supposedly raped her, and just uh, um, I mean, just total you know abject you know kind of uh, uh, you know high heel boot to the back of the neck abjection. Why? Isn't it kind of like that, uh, the double checking thing, making sure he's doing the right course, so they're going through the paces? Seems like. Yeah. But I, I just, uh, I question the right thing part of it, right? Maybe, maybe just a, I don't know. It's, an, it's interpretive. Is that all? Yes, sir. Anyone? Yes. We have a yes. I thought not. We've got no's and yeses. Yeah, that would be a, uh, we'd have to kind of interrogate the text. It's not on the quiz. We can interrogate the text if you'd like. I think it's hard to tell. I think you can play it both ways. But I don't know. I mean, Aeschylus is sort of this, this perpetual kind of, and we'll talk about this today. I mean, does, does he get anything? I, I suppose we'll see. He doesn't let on if he does. Yeah. I mean, that, that could be, he could be, he could be Kaiser Sosa in it, you know, like really engineering everything, like really behind, behind the scenes, just acting stupid, but maybe he has, you know what, I'm going to go with that. That's my new hypothesis. I think he does. I think he's just watching everybody just go and, just, and they're all doing his bidding and they don't even know it. I don't, I don't have any evidence, but. Okay, we ready? All right. is a mystery and your horror sir being members of my occupation using painting to prove my occupation a mystery but what mystery should there be in hanging if I should be hanged I cannot imagine yeah I don't know if this character's name is Everson but isn't it the executioner uh, he's talking he's involved in it okay. yeah no no <coughs> but you get some it sounds like you get some uh, some plausibility points there so we have, uh, you said Pompey? Yeah, to uh, Abhorson. <laughs> it's funny because his name is Abhorson. Um, and it's when, uh, uh, well, I'll leave the significance to the end. Faith, my lord, I spoke it, but according to the trick, if you will hang me for it, you may, but I'd rather it would please you, I might be whipped. Situation? I partly think a due sincerity governed his deeds till he did look on me. His act did not overtake his bad intent and must be buried as an intent. Isabella. Yeah, we should have got that. <laughs> Once discovered, what does Angelo beg that the Duke do with him? Yeah. Yeah, I got I get them confused too. Lodovico, Lucio. There's too many of those 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 uh, quasi Italian L names. I would be so offended if actually I wouldn't, but uh, if I had an Italian L name. Our thoughts are no subjects, intents, but merely thoughts. Anyone get something different? You get something different? Yeah, I do. I don't know. Let's check it out. I'm trying to get out of the habit of giving giving uh, answers on these. All right, so she's not on the last page, not on the second to the last page, not on the third to the last page. Okay, so there's intense but merely thoughts. 
Okay, I think that's a. I think that's what I got. I like it when it says unmuffled Claudio. <laughs> Sounds really perverse. Okay, so her her last her last act before she's silenced is uh, what does she do? What she what's she doing? Uh, so the last words are uh, in, in, intense or merely thoughts. So she's uh, arguing one specific side of the uh, the justice. Yeah. She's defending Angelo and saying um, he only wants to be Yeah, so her her last her last act is to defend Angela, who we all adore. <laughs> yes. Sir. Why did Vincenzo humiliate Isabella? Yeah, so that's obviously uh, that might be a, a, a larger exam question. Won't be on the quiz, but anyone want to field it? What number is that? Number six. So I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but I mean, he really kind of puts her through the paces, right? She's got to, she goes out and um, and has to publicly declare herself not only a not virgin, but sort of a, but sort of a whore. Yeah, I feel like a Lorenzo. All right, so when we were uh, most rudely interrupted by the end of class, as we so often are, we were discussing the Vincentio problem, because we were discussing the different problems of the problem comedies. And, uh, and we were on, so we had, uh, uh, we looked at, let's, let's look back at our other ones. We were looking at, he might be fundamentally incompetent, the embodiment of Christian mercy or understanding, Machiavellian mastermind. And then, and then we were on, uh, is he a voyeuristic sadist? And uh, um, so, I mean, we were just looking at the end. And uh, um, so, uh, uh, you know, Angelo begs to be killed. Does, does he get killed? No. Uh, Lucio wants to be whipped and then, and then eventually hang, hanged or hung. Which would it be? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then does he get that? No. What does he have to do? Yeah, and what's Angelo's punishment? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and we know because we know our Shakespeare, <laughs> that uh, uh, marriage is a, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Just kidding, honey. Um, nobody knows the bubbles I've seen. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then it, Isabella, you know, uh, she's, she's getting thrown into the, uh, we, we talked a little bit about that. Um, and then really drawing out the sentences, and, and, and really, I think, I mean, really torturing you know, drawing out the torture of, of particularly Isabella, who thinks that her, her brother's dead and that it's her fault, and that, you know, like, and just not relenting on that at all. You know, so um, so you know, people have people have thought that uh, he might be a uh, might be a, a sadist. And then you know, I mean, even if Izzy, poor Izzy, if even if she doesn't marry him, you know, she, they're not going to let her into the order of Saint Clairs after this public scandal.